and we are rolling. Let's do it. Hey there, friends. How's it going? So the last uh, two weeks, I've been working on Graceland by Paul Simon. I'm sort of finishing up my song sheet now, getting my sort of strum along lesson ready. It's going to be a key of C, kind of an easier version than what Paul Simon plays. He uses key of E chords. But one thing I've been doing alongside that is working on a fingerstyle version. Now, in this lesson you're watching right now, I want to talk about the process of putting together a fingerstyle version where you're not really sure, you don't have those signposts to follow, right? Paul Simon, again, he plays this in a different key. There's a lot of instrumentation. It's not necessarily a clear single guitar the way that like, you know, Sound of Silence is, for example. So I have a lot of uh, room for interpretation. And uh, how do I go about, you know, navigating those unmapped uh, parts of being a, you know, just a guitarist who enjoys playing and working out these versions? So I'm gonna show you that in this video. I'm gonna show you two different ways to approach this, right? One is very much more beginner friendly. It's played at kind of half uh, picking speed, so to speak. It's only eighth notes, easy chord voicings I'm gonna show you. And uh, this one is good if you just wanna grab and go finger style. It's, this is very much in the spirit of lesson 509 if you watch that one, where I show you kind of key of C, uh, chord voicings you can use, and picking patterns you can do using Travis picking. So I'm gonna show you kind of how you can use that to do a simplified version of Graceland. Now. What I'm also gonna show you is my attempts to really dial it up, play it at kind of the double speed, if I'm using that term correctly. It's 16th note picking, a lot trickier to play, but it sounds really good. And I've kind of been making progress. I think I'm about to max out my potential uh, as I've been working on this for the last two weeks and uh, there's tons of other stuff I need to get going on my plate as well. So I kind of wanna capture this in a bottle while it's fresh and show it to you here, right? So if you're interested in uh, Graceland or just putting together your own finger style patterns, for songs you like, even if they're not traditional finger style songs, you might pick up a thing or two or three from this video, and that's my hope at least, right? Uh, I don't have my Graceland song sheet as part of this lesson, but I do have a, the picking patterns I'm using uh, and a few different of the, the, the simplified versions and the in advanced versions uh, and available as a PDF, right? It's not, again, none of the lyrics for Graceland or anything like that, but it's, it's general key of C finger picking stuff. But let's look at this one and um, show you how to do this one, right? And if you want to hear both of my covers beginning to end, the easy version and the more advanced version, they'll be on my website as well if you want to sort of hear uh, what they both sound like. But let's look at how I did this. All right, so first up, when it comes to making this song our own, we're gonna talk about changing the key, right? We don't need to be locked in to whatever key the artist is using. Now, Paul Simon is using these chords, right? This is key of E major stuff, right? You have your E, your A, your B, that's your one, four, five in the key of E major, and you have your minor six chord, which is a C sharp minor, right? All pretty standard stuff. Now, I just don't like to play these chords a lot of the time, especially if I'm doing Travis picking. As I said in lesson 509, Travis picking for me works best when you're in the when you're using the chord families of C major or G major right it just sort of set you set yourself up really well for open chords you can do cool stuff with the bass notes so that's my goal I want to move it to that key so uh, key of C is what we're going to use here now you could put a capo on the fourth fret and play along with Paul Simon using everything I show you here I'm going to do no capo because it suits my voice better so that's what we're going to be looking at here but the progression in the key of C looks like this the Mississippi Delta was shining like a national to F2 3 four and F two three I am following the river a minor a minor for two measures then to G two three four to G two three then we go to part two which is basically the chorus right I'm going to Graceland C two three four F and then to G I'm going to C two three four right there is that weird uh, that kind of mimics what Paul Simon does. I'm gonna show you how you can simplify that though, because that B flat is no fun to play, and I'm gonna show you how you can get around that. Now, in case you're wondering how I translated these chords from E major to C major, um, I actually made this cheat sheet last week, which is an updated version of the one I did in my practical music theory course, where I not only show you the diatonic chords, that is the chords that belong to each major key, that are built with the notes in each key's uh, major scale, uh, but it, this also includes what are called secondary dominance and borrowed chords. 
words, which do come up in a lot of songs. And having this little cheat sheet will be helpful because all you have to do is look at the song's original key, you find the Roman numeral to map to each chord, and then you just look at the key you wanna change it to and map it to the equivalent Roman numeral. So in this case, our E becomes a C, right? Our A becomes an F, our B becomes a G, our C sharp minor becomes an A minor. And even for that, that little measure that goes from E to D to A that Paul Simon's playing, right? I just look at the equivalent. I see that the D chord in the key of E major is your flat seven, and it's a major triad based on the flat seven, right? You don't need to understand how that works. Just look at the key you wanna to change to. In this case, it's C major, and I take uh, that same equivalent chord, and it's a B flat. Now, again, we're not gonna to have to play this barred B flat, so don't worry about that, but if you want this cheat sheet, I'll attach it to uh, this lesson as well as part of the finger picking patterns I'm gonna give you. Okay, so now that we know the chords, um, as I said in lesson 509, feel free to use easier chord shapes whenever you're finger picking anything, if you want to keep it easy. So I showed you how, you know, for the C, we're going to use a regular C shape. For the F, just those middle four strings are all we need, okay? Third, third, second, first. Really nice chord shape when you're coming from the key of C, uh, from the chord of C major, okay? The G is just your third fret on the low E string, plus strings two, three, and four open, okay? And A minor. Now again, C lesson 509, if you need help with these chords, uh, if you need help getting into the finger picking patterns with these chords, because I show you how you basically can just use this simple pattern, right, for each chord. This is the C. Let's just sing along really quick, right? The Mississippi Delta was shining like a national guitar. This is my F, okay? I am following the river down the highway through the cradle of the Civil War to the G, okay? Let me go to the chorus. I'm going to Graceland, Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to Graceland. Now, this is where we run into that B flat, which gives us some trouble. Now, this brings up the topic of changing the chords to work for us, using voicings that are, you know, simpler for the B flat, or even for the F and the G, what we're going to do is mix them up a little bit in the chorus here. And hopefully this is something that, that keeps it nice and approachable, right? For the F, what I'm going to do is use this version where if you take your C and then you just add your pinky to the fourth string third fret, you get this voicing. Technically, it's like an F over C sus2, but don't worry about that. We'll just think of this as an F, but third fret, third fret, open, first fret. So check this out. During the chorus, then, we have our C, right? But our F is gonna sound like this, and our G is gonna sound like this. You're kind of keeping this note on the um, second string first fret as a constant in all three of those chords. And that's just a nice way to use a little non-traditional voicing, right? which kind of adds a little bit of character to it. It makes the chorus sound a little bit different than the verse, right? And then for what we're gonna do for the B flat in the simplified version I'm showing you now is just skip it all together, but we're gonna use this one note, okay? This is the note D, right? This note is in the B flat uh, major chord, but we're just gonna basically put our pinky there during that measure and it captures the vibe. So here is what I would play for the chorus to capture this Paul Simon's of Graceland, key of C using simple finger picking, right? I'm going to Graceland, Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee, I'm going to Graceland. Poor boys and pilgrims and families and we are going to Graceland. My traveling companion is nine years old He's the child of my first marriage And I've reason to believe We both will be received in Graceland Okay, so basically I am doing that, sing that simple finger picking pattern on the C I do it once for the F Once for the G Go back to the C and then the last time I do the C, I'm gonna end with this high E string, okay? And then go to the F. So effectively, I'm just going from a C with my pinky down, then I take my pinky off, then I go to the F again. So that's how we're gonna finger pick that. It's the simpler version. Again, it does take a little bit of practice to get the groove of that. But this is a nice way to capture the 
kind of like advanced rhythm that Paul Simon's playing, okay? So let me show you now though, the more advanced version that I've been working on as well. So this one uh, is going to use double time. <laughs> What I just played right there is a sort of baseline pattern that I worked out. Now, this is a, a bit tricky, right? Don't expect to get going with this, especially if you're uh, still working on that easier version. But the main idea here is this uh, main baseline pattern. When I say baseline, I mean foundational. It's like get comfortable with this for one chord before you attempt to move on, right? We're going to pinch on the one count, pinch again on the three count. On the next one count, we're going to pinch between the fifth and first string and then pinch on the, the three count. So here's that C sequence. I'll repeat it. Okay, this is something I spent a few days settling into, but now that I'm comfortable with it, I can kind of do it without thinking. And that's really the goal, right? Uh, so the tab is here if you want to get it. It's in my, my, my PDF as well, just showing you these picking patterns. You can use this for any song in the key of C. It's not at all unique to Graceland, right? But how would that pattern look for other chords? Um, you could basically do the F the same way. Now for that F, for that A minor, and for that G, I kept all my pinches between the bass note and the second string, okay? So you can get comfortable with that. Now, here's what I'm gonna show you though in this more advanced version, is in the F and the G measures, I wanted to capture Paul Simon's um, descending guitar thing that sounds like this, right? Okay, that's for the F. Effectively, what I'm doing there is I'm changing when I do the pinches. It's going to be on the, the and count between the one and the two. On the three count. Then repeat that. Okay, this is tricky because the rhythm of those melody notes is a bit, uh, it's happening every three eighth notes. So it, it's a pinch the first time, then you have this gap on the E between the two and the two and. I know that sounds weird, but if you look at the tab, you see what I mean here, and that repeats. So the first two measures of C and then, uh, first two chords of C and then to F would sound like this. Okay, C. Okay, then we go to the A minor, which returns to the C uh, major sort of rhythm. G, which returns to the F rhythm. Whoop. Okay, so that is basically what we're going to use for the verse. If you sing it, it sounds like this. The Mississippi Delta is shining like a national guitar. I am following the river down the highway to the cradle of the Civil War. I'm going to Graceland. Okay, that is tricky. It took me a long time to be able to sing and play that, and I still kind of mess it up. So uh, feel free to simplify the pattern when you're singing. That's, in general, a thing you're totally allowed to do. Now, the last thing I want to show you here is how I did the sort of chorus using this more advanced pattern, okay? Here's what it sounds like, and then I'll explain it. I'm going to Graceland, Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm going to Graceland. Poor boys and pilgrims and families, and we are going to Graceland. My traveling companion. You just repeat it, right? So for the C, it's pretty straightforward as far as what we've already done, right? Pinch. To the F and the G, we're going to pinch on the one count, right? using the same F and G voicings I showed you in the simplified version, right? This is my F, this is my G, okay? And we go back to the C. Now this part is gonna be uh, an attempt to capture Paul Simon's sort of triplet rhythm here. Okay, so the first three sixteenth notes of the C are fifth string, 
first string, fourth string, then you could have a 16th note rest. Then for the B, B flat, right? First fret on the fifth string, open fourth string, third fret of the second string. And then we're gonna go to the F. Now I am wrapping my thumb for the F here, which is more of an, of an advanced skill. Um, if you can't do that, just use the uh, middle four string version that I taught you here, okay? But it, so that measure is. Then you do a pinch on the four count and then you just do that alternating bass note. So that, again, that chorus played slowly here. singing uh, I'm going to Graceland Graceland Memphis Tennessee I'm going to Graceland poor boys and pilgrims and families and we are going to Graceland my traveling companion is nine years old he's the child Oh, I messed up there. Now this is tricky when you're singing. I often will stumble over the lyrics or stumble over the playing. So in general, and this is kind of the last tip I want to show you here. I don't have tabs for this written out, but if you find yourself struggling to maintain your playing and your tempo and your singing and all that sort of thing, you want to either slow it down or simplify. That's a general rule for all of guitar playing. When I say simplify with Travis picking and you're singing, you can just do the bass note, right? And my traveling companion is nine years old. He is the child of my first marriage. And I've reason to believe we both will be received in Graceland. Okay, that's a general rule. It's gonna do you lots of favors with Travis picking. When you're singing, just keep it simple. Just do the bass note. And as soon as you're done singing, you kind of spit your, it's like your computer uh, closes an application because you're not singing anymore. So you have some more memory or more RAM or whatever to work with. And then you can bring back in. But when you are singing, it is okay. Just do the bass notes. Okay, and that's, that's something you kind of hear, especially if you listen to like John Prine, for example. Um, he'll have these instrumental uh, introductions, like Hello In There is a good example. But during the, during the verse of Hello In There, now I might be wrong because he's such a good player, but lots of times you hear him, his finger picking is a lot more subdued and light, right? You don't need to be doing the ornate melodic stuff when you're singing because your voice is carrying the melody, okay? So, um, you know, this was a, I hope this is a helpful walkthrough of my process here. Again, listen to my versions, my full playthroughs of both of these are over on my website, okay? And again, this is less of a hand-holdy note-by-note tutorial, and it's more just showing you my process as I am working it out. And then you can look out for my main lesson where I teach you how to strum this song using a lot of the sort of shortcuts I'm going to show you here, but it's going to be something I think you're really going to dig as well. So uh, let me know if you have any questions and um, check out lesson 509 where I did sort of simplified Travis picking in the key of C. I kind of did a lot of the getting up to speed with this stuff if it's new to you. And I have tons of Travis picking lessons over on my website. I have a lesson if you need help with that rap thumb. I have a lesson showing you how to learn this step by step, okay? This is a, an essentially... Uh, helpful thing to do when you're Travis picking because it effectively lets you kind of play an F without barring and then you can add your pinky you can take off fingers and get open strings in there lots of cool stuff you can do all right so hope this is helpful for y'all um, I'll see you in the next video and until then have a great week and bye bye